Hi, I'm Bill Panoff of Porthole Cruise and Travel. Before I join my cruise adventure, I'm spending the day in the charming city of Nice, France, walking the open air markets, visiting the famous Opera House, and stopping in Al Kazir's olive oil shop, founded by Nicholas Al Kazir. The self-named producer of some of the world's finest olive oils has been producing these delicacies since 1868. And who can forget chocolate, and especially the chocolate at Henry Hour's Confessory? Not me. I think I'll try one of those delicious looking truffles. The open air market has everything from fresh herbs and flowers to sun dried and vine ripened tomatoes. One thing that everyone who visits the open air market must try is a soca, a simple salty crepe that makes your mouth water for more. We are on board Atlas Ocean Voyages World Navigator for a cruise that's on everyone's bucket list, the French and Italian Riviera. Atlas Ocean Voyages luxury yacht, the World Navigator, has the finest amenities. Come with me while I show you around. A relaxing pool and deck, spacious lounges and guest areas, coffee and drink bars, masterfully designed staterooms, and spacious baths with L'Occitane amenities. Friendly staff waiting on your every need a world-class spa, and plenty of places to take in the views. I'm sitting here in my favorite place on board the World Navigator to start my day, Paula's Pantry. They have wonderful coffee and healthy snacks to energize me for the morning adventures. And if you want to indulge a bit more, their pastries are yummy. We have just arrived in Cannes, and this is a million dollar view. A short tender ride to shore gives me some spectacular views of this world famous city. The red barrel clay roofs and the pale pastel color houses are a signature of Cannes. Welcome to Cannes, France. Every year, Cannes rolls out the red carpet for the biggest stars in the world for the Cannes Film Festival. The Hotel Splendide is one of Cannes' most famous landmarks. When it comes to movies, romance and comedy go hand in hand. And where I'm going today, two comedy greats were married. Do you have any idea where I'm going or, or who I'm talking about? As I leave Cannes by car, you can see from a distance a beautiful village perched high on a hill, surrounded by a stone wall, which was once its protector from unwanted visitors. I am in the picturesque village known as St. Paul de Vents, and this is where Gene Wilder and Gilda Radner were married in 1984. It was known in the 1960s to be a haven for the creative community of actors, writers, and artists. This small village boasts big things. Sitting at the base of the Alps and a stone's throw from the Mediterranean Sea on the French Riviera, St. Paul de Vence has perfectly preserved its wonderful architecture of the 16th and 17th centuries. Stroll the beautiful and winding cobblestone streets and browse the many art galleries and shops this village has to offer. Au revoir, beautiful cons and St. Paul de Vence. Tonight I have the privilege of meeting the captain and crew one-on-one -on -one at the captain's cocktail party. On behalf of Atlas Ocean Voyages and World Navigator crew, welcome on board.
We're here on board the bridge of the World Navigator with the master of the vessel, Augusto Nito. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, you have a very important job on board the ship to, to navigate this beautiful vessel. Yes, uh, this is a beautiful vessel, as you can, uh, you can see during your stay on board. And uh, I hope that you enjoy very much our product. The technology on here is uh, quite interesting. Can you tell us a little bit about it? So this ship is uh, uh, fully active. That means we don't use any more the paper shards. Oh, so wow. we use electronic shards. Very important equipment for us is this our dynamic position. Dynamic position is equipment that is connected to the propulsion of the ship and allow us to keep the position of the ship even when it's rough weather, wow. which is very important for us wow. and very safe, especially when we are doing tender operations. If a guest wants to meet you or come on the bridge and take a look at this fantastic uh, bridge, is there an opportunity to do that during the cruise? Yes, I'm trying all the times to go around, to be in the public areas, to pass by the restaurant, to be in the gangway in the certain opportunities, and also the bridge. The bridge tour, I think, is one of the highlights of the cruise. They can come here and to chat with me. And also, I have the pleasure to explain all this uh, magnificent equipment that you have on the bridge. Captain, look forward to continuing our sailing on the World Navigator, and thank you so much. Food is a huge part of your cruise experience, and onboard Atlas Ocean Voyages, most recently they have introduced a new program called Epicurean Expeditions, and I'm here with master foodie Mara Papathidoro. How are you? Pretty good, there you go, I'm great. Tell me about this program, how it involved, and how do guests participate in this program? You know, culture and cuisine, Bill, are completely natural sure. connection. Behind every taste there's a tradition, and behind every tradition there's a taste. And you really get to experience that, especially on a cruise ship when you're able to go into ports. Food brings a place alive, sure. a food memory evokes a travel memory. When you travel to understand the cuisine, really makes it a major part of the experience. And since Atlas is so well known in the Antarctica for its expeditions, they sort of decided to carry this theme through the Mediterranean and in doing so, Epicurean seemed to be the right connection. Mediterranean is the magical part of ingredients all over the world. Tell us about the live presentations that you do on board. The menus we've designed all have that thread of the flavors of wherever we're sailing, whether it's the Mediterranean or other parts. Uh, and then we've also added a gastronomic guest, a different chef will travel on different itineraries and sort of bring those flavors forward as well as then we will do together um, chef demonstrations, I'll do the talking, they'll do the cooking and stirring, and then the guests get to participate in tasting, and that ends up on a menu at some point during the voyage. Because they're a smaller, more boutique feel cruise line, they've done a really wonderful job about keeping it and making it personal. Mara, I'm getting very hungry the more I talk to you about you. I mean, dinner isn't only in about an hour, but uh, I'm starved. But in the meantime, let's uh, uh, have cheers. a toast and cheers to Epicurean Expeditions. Epicurean Expeditions. Cheers. cheers. I am excited to explore this next destination along the French Riviera, which was once the home of an American princess, the late Princess Grace. Welcome to Monaco. Did you know that the Principality of Monaco is the second smallest country in the world after the Vatican City? A short tender ride into the city, Monte Carlo in Monaco gives you a quick tour of the beautiful port and drops you right off in the center of the city. From above, you can see the vast wealth surrounding this international city. When you visit Monte Carlo for the first time, or if you are like me, every time I come here, I climb to the top to take in the breathtaking views. Monte Carlo has a lot to show off. After all, it's the playground for the rich and famous from around the globe. Monte Carlo is full of wonders. The Monaco Grand Prix is one of the most prestigious and iconic Formula One races in the world. The street circuit winds through the narrow and challenging streets of Monaco, providing a thrilling spectacle for all racing enthusiasts. After some long walks around the city, a dip in the pool and a cocktail are a great way to unwind. Monte Carlo on any given night is a wonder of lights, but on this night in particular, it is even more spectacular with fireworks to celebrate the 100th birthday of Prince Rainier.
as my tender approaches this quaint village, you can see the 12th and 13th century architecture that is still standing today, making this special place picture perfect. The most colorful town on the French Riviera is Villefranche-sur-Mer. Look at these homes painted in beautiful hues of red, orange, yellow, and pink. And this is why this village and its views have been used in numerous Hollywood films, like An Affair to Remember and The Bucket List. On my way to the next destination, and you can see why this village has the bragging rights when it comes to views. The Notre Dame de l'Assomption Church is Baroque architecture in a medieval village. How stunning. Most people know Monte Carlo, but few people know anything about the small village that charmed Walt Disney called S. One wonders if Etz was the inspiration for some of Walt Disney's stories and theme park creations. I love walking the beautiful village of Etz with all of its art galleries, shops, and restaurants. Built in the ruins of a medieval fortress, the exotic gardens of Es offer an exceptional panoramic view of the French Riviera. The botanical gardens are designed using lots of cacti as the climate is perfect for them to flourish. Heading back to the World Navigator, I get to take in some more breathtaking views. As the day comes to an end, the memories along the French Riviera will forever be etched in my mind. I am heading to a new village, a fishing village to be exact, one that celebrities like Rihanna flock to. Why are so many celebrities so interested in fishing in this village? Let me show you where I am. I have spent the last few days in the gorgeous French Riviera, and today we have arrived in Portofino, part of the Italian Riviera. So I'm no longer saying bonjour, come sa va, I am saying ciao, come stai. The Italian Riviera sits along a beautiful body of water known as the Ligurian Sea, with villages that have inlets and steep hillsides, much like the French Riviera. A great way to enjoy Portofino is by sitting in the piazza, people watching, and enjoying an authentic terry masu. Mm. As I gaze up at Castillo Brown from the shore, and yet again from the Church of St. Giorgio and its century-old cemetery, I decide to make the climb to the top of the Castillo Brown. a healthy climb to the top, but one that is worth it because it will give you a view of Portofino like no other. The World Navigator is essentially a floating yacht and the gentleman that looks after the hotel portion of the vessel is indeed Nuno, the hotel manager. Nuno, how are you? I'm amazing, William. I hope, uh, nice to have you here, and I hope you and uh, enjoy yourself on board. I'm very impressed by the spaciousness of the staterooms and the public areas. Absolutely, William. That's one of the many pluses of sailing on board World Navigate is that uh, you never feel crowded, it's never crowded. The staterooms, as you see, are beautifully appointed by a professional, very nice company called Oite in Ponte, and very spacious balconies are in many of the staterooms. And in the public areas, both on deck seven and deck four, where the main lounges and the restaurants are located, you always feel a sense of uh, spaciousness. One program that I was very pleasantly surprised to see is the water sports program on board the World Navigator. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, uh, William, we have a water sports team that is here throughout the, the Epicurean expeditions, and uh, we are deploying the marine and the water sports program in every, at every single opportunity that we can. Obviously, it's the weather permitting. In summer here in Europe, it's practically every day. And we are deploying the kayaks, stand-up paddling, the duckies, uh, water skis, jet ski, and we, we deploy on a first-come, first-served basis, complimentary. The guests don't have to pay for that. The World Navigator is in port for many hours, so they always find the time to do their shoreside visits and at the same time throw in a couple of hours of water, uh, water sports. Nuno, it's a pleasure chatting with you, and I look forward to continuing my voyage on the World Navigator. William, it's been a pleasure having you, and we, we hope you continue to enjoy.
The boutique on board the World Navigator has something for everyone, a gift for yourself, someone you are traveling with, or someone special back home. If walking all day while ashore isn't enough, the fitness center has more walking for you to do. The world-class spa on board offers L'Occitane products, dry sauna for relaxing, massages to soothe your aching muscles, and much more. Dining on board is an Epicurean delight. International chefs from around the world prepare some classic French and Italian fare using the freshest ingredients. Dine al fresco and enjoy the fresh sea air as our chefs stimulate your taste buds. This luxury yacht from above is a sight to behold. Getting energized for the day is easy on board the World Navigator. The breakfast buffet has more choices than you can count. Fresh fruit, breads, gourmet coffee, and hand-cut meats are just the beginning. We have a fisherman's view as we pull our tender into this village. And why is this view so important to a fisherman? Behind me is the medieval fishing village of Porta Venere. You'll notice that all the homes behind me look alike, but the fishermen painted them different colors, so when coming home from fishing, they can identify where they live. There is so much to do when you visit Porta Venere. You can explore the many caves along its coast, walk the medieval streets with its many shops throughout the ancient city, or take a stroll to the castle. When driving along the cliffs from Porta Venere, there are some beautiful vistas of the Gulf of Genoa and the first of the approaching villages of Cinque Terre, Rio Maggiore. Rio Maggiore is the most recognizable by its towering houses that seem to be stacked on top of one another. The fishing wharf and shoreline filled with colorful fishing boats and a Piccola beach are all part of Rio Maggiore's charm and quaintness. We are now at one of the most beautiful villages in Cinque Terre, Vernazza, and by looking around, I can see why. Chosen as one of the most beautiful towns in all of Italy, Vernazza is a bustling little village where people love to go and swim, enjoy the beach, shop and eat in the many boutiques and restaurants the village has to offer. If you don't get enough walking on shore, well, you can do some more on board. The stunning Dome Lounge is a great place to sit back and take in the breathtaking views while cruising on the World Navigator. And if you don't mind, I'll have a cocktail with some friends while I'm here. I had an amazing cruise on Atlas Ocean Voyages World Navigator. I had a chance to experience the Italian and French Riviera, coupled with impeccable service and amazing food. Until next time, I'm Bill Panoff. Mm -hmm.